Hey guys, welcome to The Sims 3 Island Paradise. I know I said I was done playing this game for this channel, and I know not too many people care because this game is not a fun watch or whatever, but I did not give this expansion pack a fair chance, and it's one of my favorites in the entire Sims series when it works, and there's ways to make it work a little bit better. So this is kind of more for me, and I hope that you enjoy it as well, but I got a little bit of a challenge here that's going to be a little bit more focused and hopefully more enjoyable to watch, so let's get right to it. Meet Mad Dog McCracken. This crazy character that I designed is homeless. Well, sort of. It's impossible to be homeless in The Sims, but, you know, he wants to join the lifeguard career. We will be doing that. Um, but first, let's go into buy mode and get him a boat that kind of better suits his homeless situation. And then we are going to use a cheat to make him absolutely broke. We'll give him a red windsurfing thing because it suits his little colors. He's mostly orange and stuff. So family funds, McCracken, <laughs> I don't know, let's just try to think of a name for this guy. So we have zero money, we can't do crap, but, so it's kind of like a homeless challenge, but you're going to see very quickly that it's easy to make money with this expansion. He's a sailor, he's brave, he loves the outdoors, he's a kleptomaniac, and an angler. It's all stuff kind of related to being homeless in this pack. The kleptomaniac is going to help us make money, so we're making that his preferred boat, cancel the newspaper as always. I'm going to try to do this kind of more less cuts, but here we are in Isla Paradiso right next to this hidden island because his lifetime wish is to discover all eight hidden islands. And this is the one that if you just sail right by it, you unlock it. I believe I showed that in part 15 of my former Let's Play, but yeah, this one's going to be all focused and catered towards that. We're not going to cheat the islands. You could just type in discover all uncharted islands and get them all, but that's not fun. But see, look at this. I don't know. I just love the boats. It just adds so much different feeling to The Sims. And honestly, when this pack is playable and working well, it's one of my favorite experiences I've ever had with The Sims franchise. So say what you will about it, but I find it enjoyable, and that's why I'm doing it again. And there we go. We got Barrel Shoals, the easiest island to unlock. And um, let's move to it. Click on it here go to real estate and move to this private lot because we own both now and that's where our first money is going to be we're going to sell that property we started on but we need a computer to do that so we have to go make use of the in-town library so this is a lot of fun actually i love playing like a castaway and i know there's homeless challenges and castaway challenges respectively that people have written rules for and stuff, but this is not going to play totally by them, but kind of follow along a familiar theme. Got to cancel the newspaper again. Every time you move, you got to remember to do that. That's just another way to make sure that it runs smoother because it doesn't have to worry about loading the newspaper delivery person. But we got our own fishing pond on this thing, which is good. This is going to be our source of food. Also, the seasons pack is installed and it's an endless summer. It's always going to be summer. It's 28 days long. You also notice there's a uh, seashell spawner on this island. It's just common shells. But we can see that because I do have uh, buy debug on. And I am not above cheats, but for this first hour or two, we're going to play pretty much... That jingle, though. I'm s that jingle's still too loud. I don't understand how it turned it down. A university welcome kit has been put in our inventory. Yeah, we moved before the llama could come. But there's our first money. Let's sell it. 20 simoleons. Okay, that should be enough to buy some food if the summer festival is going on. Again, I think that is something that is probably out of the rules of a true castaway homeless challenge. You're supposed to learn the gardening skill, I believe, and grow your own food and then cook it with a campfire. We're going to be doing that, but we're also going to be taking advantage of the season's festivals and things. So he wants to learn. Well, he wants to garden it all, I guess. I don't know, should I promise that? Yes! Did we catch anything? We caught something, I believe. We caught a minnow. That's good. We could roast that thing. And we will have the money. Alright, we'll just go with that for now. So now we have to make use of our time because we are under threat of dying. If the hunger meter goes low, you're dead. Another challenge to do is to make it to be a forever winter because then you have to, uh, the cold I mean, with summer, heat is still an obstacle, too. If you stay out in the sun for way too long, you get tan first, then you get sunburned, and if you stay out any longer than that, you actually set on fire and die. Um, but we gotta go to this computer in the library, 
and check real estate. And this is how we're going to sell our initial property, which again, I just kind of picked so that we could start playing because the game, there's no other way to be homeless. But see, it's 750 simoleons. That's a nice chunk to start. So already we're kind of not homeless, but that doesn't really buy much. That's like a couple chairs. I don't even think that could buy a bed. Maybe like the cheapest bed. But we could read some skill books, but look at our needs a little bit are low. So let's go to the bathroom here because I haven't seen the message about the summer festival yet. So I don't think it's all set up in the Central Park area. But yeah, this is going to be good because in my previous Let's Play, it was all in Sunset Valley. And I only did that one episode here in Isla Paradiso and I just talked about how it's a laggy mess and it is. But... Honestly, I, I attempted to record this a little bit already, and I've figured out some stuff that will uh, make it work a little bit better, hopefully. And I, I played a lot of hours of this, and then I scrapped all of that. Oh, we cooled down. Okay, it's like, what the heck is that jingle? Oh, they made it with the newspaper after all. Let's recycle it. But yeah, I scrapped all the hours that I did record, and now I'm doing it again, and hopefully it's going to be a little bit more focused. Because what I ended up doing is I gave this guy a roommate, and it was a slutty mermaid. And then I started having too much fun woohooing the town and harassing them. I was, like, shooting rain clouds at them and stuff. I don't know. But we're going to get a tent. We're going to make it orange to match Mad Dog McCracken. Uh. So see, already we're only at 550. We want the fire pit, even though he's a kleptomaniac, and I could steal one. This might actually be stupid. I did not do this in the previous attempt at this. 40 or $45. Well, we should go with the Island Paradise furniture, right? It's got a pillow on it. Yeah. One chair, anglet, so we get a good shot of the tent every time he chomps down on some food. Let's move it a little bit. But yeah, we're going to be living outside. We're not building a house. We don't need it. We live on an island. None of this indoors crap. Let's place this tent. It's got to be on an angle. It's just better that way. There we go. This is our humble start. 210 simoleons left to spend. Uh, speaking of that, let's get the sleeping bag because I know we're going to need this. Because there are times during this when you're playing with this little money and with all of this ocean to explore. Put that in our inventory. We're going to be stuck in the town with low energy in some situations. So we're going to need to, that sleeping bag to get a little bit of better energy boost. But yeah, I like this actually a lot better than building a house. I love the idea of playing homeless. I've never actually done it before aside from the previous attempt at this. But well, we light the fire and now we can roast something. That one fish that we conveniently caught. And this is actually going to max out the hunger meter. If you didn't know. Let's like, look at this man. I love this stuff. This is why this pack is good. I don't know, just something about the ambiance of it. This tiny little island, that's home, that's it. A tent and a campfire. And yeah, anything that is edible, you can roast at a fire pit like this. Which, there's a lot of kelp underwater in here. Which is a mermaid's favorite food. But you could roast it as a normal sim as well and eat it. And it does the same thing. It maxes out hunger for a decent chunk of time. And it's a great way to... Uh, Stay in shape. No, <laughs> I don't know. Something about this game, it really makes you realize almost how easy it is to take care of a sim. It's very hard to not keep them alive. Like, you have to deliberately try to kill them in most cases. But there we go. That is basically our first day, but this is good. It's nighttime. We have to make use of the kleptomaniac trait, so we definitely want this energy to be building up a little bit faster here. It will. It's only 9 p.m. That fire looks nice. I would sit there, man. See, this is this is my kind of humble abode. I would love this. I'm not much of a camper in real life, but... I've done it once. I was invited as a kid with my best friend's family. And in order to get into the campsite, they just pretended I was part of their family. So for like a week... We pretended my last name was theirs, and that was our way to get in at the same spot. And we did some snorkeling in a river and stuff. But I was too young. I remember I broke a lantern, and I felt really bad about it. But anyway, now that it's nighttime, let's find something we could swipe. Because we're a klepto, and we could either sell it... We need to uh, swipe a toilet and a shower. 
And conveniently with Island Paradise, there's a one size fits all. We'll go to this park and swipe something. Hopefully we can get a statue. I think there are, I don't remember the kleptomaniac trait too well, but there are stipulations, but surprisingly not too many. You can swipe big statues and things. Which that's another way, if you get lucky and swipe a statue, those things are like thousands of simoleons. I think I just heard an alien car. There's a spaceship somewhere. Well, we're getting the bush. I think it was a light. They typically do go for the smaller stuff, and you can only swipe three things per day. I do know that much. Don't get the flamingo, please. Oh, he's going for another light. Okay, well, that's probably about a hundred. That's a fancy light. Just try to get the statue, though. I know super large public items you cannot swipe, which maybe this constitutes as that, but things like the central fountain, I don't think you could swipe that. Another light, yep. Well, okay. That's at least something to start. Yeah, I can't steal any more today. Alright, we got full energy. Our hunger's a little bit low. And the the thing... Let's see. Sell all. We got 340. That's not enough to take a class. I like to take a class in the scuba diving skill to get things started. Because that's where our money is going to be made. We got to scuba dive and sell every single fish that we catch. Remembering, of course, that we could just roast kelp, and that's our daily meal. Oh, wait, it is active. Oh, no, it's not. 8 a.m. it starts. Okay, that's right. We didn't get the message yet. So we could go to the library and learn a skill. You know what would be a good skill to learn? Is gardening, because as soon as you hit level 1 gardening, your inventory automatically gets a few seeds that you can plant, and that's how you can another way you can get some things to roast. So let's do that. Cooking would be another good one, but the likelihood of us buying a fridge and an oven is... Like, you don't even need to. Leave that crap inside where it belongs. All we need is our little campfire. Ah, oh, yes. Also, it's a power study in the library. I'm not sure, but I think being in the library reading skill books it is a faster process than if you're just anywhere else trying to learn the skill via a book. Hence the power study moodlet. But there we go. What did we get? We got grapes and coffee beans and eh, university life stuff. Aside from the grapes. I was hoping for more food. I don't really like the coffee bean things. But they could come in handy in a pinch if I'm really low on energy and need to do something. I think they give you a little bit of a caffeine boost that prevents your energy from draining as fast. But while we're waiting for the summer festival where we're going to take a dump and take a shower simultaneously... There it is! Let's get some fun up playing the racing game is what I was going to say. Got some rain going on, too. That's another thing. The weather, especially in this island... Whoops. Is, um... It's quite enjoyable. So the summer festival here, these three toilets, the all-in-one bathroom, and this snow cone machine is my best friend. Uh, what, what color? What, what flavor? Let's go with cherry. Kind of matches Mad Dog. I don't know, in my mind when I was creating him, I was thinking like this pirate sailor dude. But it's The Sims. You're very limited. It's not like Assassin's Creed or Sea of Pirates or whatever. Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Get the name right. But yeah, these three all-in-one bathrooms, we're going to be coming back to swipe one of them. Because that's 4,500 simoleons normally. And there's no way we're going to get that kind of money anytime soon. Yeah. Each of these snow cone flavors gives you a special moodlet. I forget what cherries is. I'm not sure that it gives the moodlet every time either, but we shall see. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, no, that's his goatee. I thought that was his tongue for a minute. Yeah, well. Nice classical music playing. I have the music turned down and the sound effects turned down slightly, but the sound effects still seem really loud. But absolutely, with this game, I love the ambient, ambient volume, I guess is another way to say it. Let's see what food we can buy. Chili cheese fries, that's not French fries. That's pretty cheap. What else we got in here? Hot wings, that sounds pretty good. I had some wings the other day, that was really nice. Nachos, I actually just had some nachos as well. Let's go with French fries, you can't go wrong with French fries. It's one of the best things ever. 
nice plate. Nice soggy wet french fries wide open in the rain. Why not? But there you go. Hunger is topped off and we're good to go. So now we can focus. Well, we could top off the energy with our sleeping bag. Knowing that we have to swipe one of these toilets. That's an option. Uh, what else we got going on here? City Hall. Join the lifeguard profession since that is a promise. This I would normally not do. However... One of the islands, one of the eight islands, remember we have one, so there's seven more islands to discover to complete the lifetime wish. Um, and one of those islands is unlocked by rescuing 35 sims in the lifeguard profession, which is very slow and hard to do, and we're going to have to see what we can do to kind of boost that a little bit. But that is why I have to take the lifeguard profession. Normally, I would register myself as self-employed and just sell everything as a diver. I like that a lot better, but I actually have never explored the lifeguard profession, so this should be kind of interesting. Well, let's go fishing in the meantime while we wait for nighttime to fall. Because it's just enjoyable to be out in the rain fishing. Uh, we're too low skill to know what's there. What about this area? Minnows and goldfish, just like home. We'll fish there for now. Take a rest in the sleeping bag. And then go see if we can swipe a toilet shower. You know, your typical Thursday night. Yeah, I don't know. Felt like something to say. Oh, yeah. We're catching some stuff. That's good. More stuff to cook. We have the seeds in our inventory from learning the gardening skill, but you cannot roast seeds. You can only roast the fruit itself once it's harvested. So we do need to rely on fish right now. If not buying food at the festival. And we do want to save every simoleon we can. However, I edited this town. I'm going to say that right now, and we're going to see it soon enough whenever we do go scuba diving. Wow, he's really... Well, he is an angler. That makes sense. He's learning the fishing skill lightning fast. All right. Well, the energy is getting a little bit low. We've got a decent amount of fish. Nice water sounds, too. Yet it still seems quieter. That's what I don't understand. We could swipe that park bench. Whatever. Let's sleep in the bag. This is enjoyable, too. Oh, we'd swipe that grill as well. That would come in handy for the cooking skill. This is awesome. I just love this. Just where, No matter where you are, just take a, a nap. And it's not like they collapse. It's at your own volition or whatever. I don't know why I never thought to do these kinds of things. Like I always play The Sims the same way. You build a house and you do the standard stuff. But this is why The Sims 3 is still good. I love this open world concept. In The Sims 4, you could kind of do this, but... Between all of these things, there's a loading screen. And yes, the loading screen makes it more populated. But in a way, with a homeless challenge like this, where the main reason somebody like myself is playing it is to enjoy the atmosphere that they created. That's the one thing. Say what you want about The Sims and EA. The weather is pretty cool. I like it. Well, maybe that's just me. That's why I have the ambient volume maxed out. And I tried to lower the sound effects and the music, but yet they still seem to take precedent over all the ambient noise. Which is a little bit upsetting. I hear a very faint buzzing sound. Mosquitoes are introduced in this pack. I do know that much. But alright. It's a little bit populated. I know this ends at 9pm. We could go make a snow cone. Up to no good. Like a spark on fire or a splinter in wood. Name that lyric. Hmm. Learn the cooking skill. Are we going to buy a fridge? No, we're not. We are going to garden, so better promise that. We do need lifetime happiness points, too, because the collection helper reward in particular, which I think costs 40,000 total accumulated lifetime points, that comes in handy immensely for yet another hidden island. I'm just going to explain how to unlock them as we go, because I kind of want this to be more casual. Less abrupt cuts, like I was doing towards the end of the previous playthrough. But yeah, so I think if you were doing a true homeless challenge, you would not be abusing the, uh, the snow cone machine, for example. Oh yeah, you can't steal anymore. What time is it? Does it change at midnight? This kind of worries me. I think it will, right? Because midnight is a new day. It's instantly Tuesday, and then that resets the counter, I believe. I think we're okay. 
We could top off the energy in our sleeping bag. Let's do that. Oh, whoops. I don't want to place it. Reading. Ah. Gotta pay attention. This is actually bad to do. I've discovered this the hard way. If the festival is open, the public stereos are on, and your sim instantly wakes up and is annoyed by it because it's too noisy. But here in the, the dark of the night, you can sleep all you want. All right, let's see. No, 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 come on. I thought you were going to... You can control it a little bit, but remember, he can only steal three things. No, stop going for the balloons. You don't need balloons. You need a shower. I don't think this is a hidden skill. It's just random. No. Oh. No. Maybe I should let him swipe one of the small things. My first attempt at this in my previous playthrough, he swiped the toilet right away. So I know it's possible. A little, oh, what is that? Is that a light? A pod lamp. Yes, well, that's probably another hundred simoleons or so. That'll be enough to take a class in something like the cooking or ath athletic. We want athletic because that's needed for the lifeguard career. Come on, swipe the toilets. I know you can do it. Why would you not? Seriously? Go here, maybe, and then swipe? Yes, there we go. He's about to do it. I don't, which one is he taking, green or blue? Or it was kind of purpley, wasn't it? Yes, we have a toilet, and it just fit in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, video games are interesting sometimes. So let's go home before we get into any more trouble. I don't think you can get caught by the cops. I think if you swipe something in somebody's house, the homeowner can yell at you and kick you out, but I don't think you can get arrested. Maybe. We have a shell as well, so that's nice. But this is good. Now, when we sell this stuff, which I could do right now. Oh, what the heck? Let's make sure not to sell all. 130, yes, that will put us at... I know it costs 400 simoleons to take a class in the scuba diving. What the heck? Why is it not placing? There we go. There we go. We have energy, bladder, hygiene, hunger. Everything but social and fun is accounted for on this little island, just with these little objects. No house necessary. That's awesome. And if you ha give your sim the insane trait, I think maybe neurotic as well? But I know definitely insane, when their social gets low enough, they can talk to themselves and boost it that way. So that's a good one to consider if you're planning to live as a lonely sim. Oh, we got options. Go with the minnow. We don't want to waste too much of our high money stuff. I believe a goldfish sells for more than a minnow. But yeah, I tried to make this guy. Initially, I made an old man with gray hair and a huge beard. But then I didn't really want to play as an old man, so I made him this crazy young dude. Yeah, and the insane trait would fit him. We could plant this stuff too, why not? He wants to garden. We need the lifetime happiness. And I'm not planning on turning into a mermaid right away, but that is a thing that we might have to do. But more on that when we get there. I don't really know about the rest of it too much. Yeah. Once again, I don't know why that jingle is so loud. I would assume that it's a sound effect or music, but yet... The only thing that I know is set at max volume are the sim voices and the ambient noise. But I don't know. One thing I also noticed is the sim voices. You can change the pitch. And that never seems to work. I never notice it. Once on a former computer, I noticed it. It worked. But all my other times playing this across various computers, the voice pitch of The Sims never seems to do anything. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's a setting on my actual computer. I just can't do it. Level 2, just like that. That is still very low gardening, which means these plants will eventually die. Probably. But that's fine, because we only need them temporarily. So 
So, we have this island. The next one in question, well, I told you about the lifeguard one, but that's not going to happen for a long time. But we need to get it started right away, because it is going to take a long time. Uh, scuba diving. Actually, wait a minute. Let's be smart about this. Can I just raise it by snorkeling? I don't see why this wouldn't work. Why was I spending class money on it and previously? Again, I played like 30 hours of this. And like I said, I, I added a mermaid woman that was woohooing the town and I got too distracted. So I ended up scrapping the whole thing and now I'm doing it again to try to focus more on this, this one sim experience. Maybe I'll add a roommate or I'll marry a mermaid because that's another thing I like to do with this pack. I like to woohoo all the mermaids, at least the women. But that's just how I roll. I don't know how Mad Dog McCracken rolls. We'll just see what happens. That's part of the fun of The Sims. But from my understanding... Nice. I'm trying to not talk when that jingle goes, because I don't know... I remember in my previous Sims 3 playthrough, that thing was so loud that it would even drown out my voice. I don't understand. Well, what was I saying, though? Hey, Blue Topaz, there's some money for you, too. That might actually be worth a decent chunk. Get cut. 11, never mind. I think it's not worth it to get them cut, I don't think, right? Because you got to pay for them to get cut, and then I think it makes them sell for not too much more. But there we go, we got scuba diving level 2. That means we can finally dive in Rocky Reef. And this is where you can see... It quickly deviates from the homeless challenge here. This is not a challenge. This is for fun. Just to experience the castaway kind of thing. And in a YouTube video series kind of thing, discover all of the Uncharted Islands in not too long of a time. Because the requirements for some of these things are too heavily on chance. And it can very quickly consume way too much time that would not make for a good video. It would just end up being aimless wandering and stuff. So you're going to see what I'm getting at is Rocky Reef. I used a cheat to edit it and I added more fish spawners, some of which are rare spawners. So some of the best fish in the game are going to be in this early dive spot, which means some of those fish are going to sell for like 800, even a thousand simoleons if I'm that lucky. Phone's ringing, dude. <laughs> but see, this is why I gave him the windsurfer. It's a little bit slower, but it's not too slow. I started off giving him the rowboat. That thing is really annoying. But look at this view, man. Look at the pink skies. Let's go in a tab with the phone ring off in the distance. It just looks so good. This is why I love this expansion pack and why I'm playing it again, like I said. I just like this world a lot, and I wish that EA didn't release it so buggy fresh fish hey we can accept that one i already have three fish i believe we're definitely going to get some more deliver it to the groceries and diner and get some more money what just happened oh i cooled down okay but yeah i also deleted a lot of the decoration down here because sometimes it's very hard to see the, spell, the fish that spawn. Because there's so much kelp and random leaves and things in the way. But yes, underwater. If not for the jingle, it would be absolutely amazing. But I fear if I turn sound effects all the way down, it might be hard to... Um... But yeah, look at this. We got a black goldfish. Oh, really? The jingle. Don't worry, it'll lessen as we start going. These are just all the early... The sim was like firstborn things. But once we start promising more complicated things, it takes longer to complete, so that jingle will become far more infrequent. But yeah, lobster... That Actually, they spawn down here normally, usually over by the cave. But yeah, I'm not sure how well you can hear it, but I love the un underwater sounds. Ooh, a shark too, glitching out. Oh no, he's fixed, okay. If you watch him, he can attack you, and we actually do have to get attacked by a shark at some point. It's one of the requirements for discovering an island. But, uh... 
More on that later as well. The main focus right now is to scuba dive what we can. Basically, we're gonna stay down here. Hope to meet a mermaid. We need to do that too, because a mermaid, okay. I guess I gotta explain that. One of the hidden islands has to be shown to you by one of the mermaids in town. Not a mermaid that you create, but one of the towny ones that just auto-populates and randomly comes down any of the dive spots. You have to befriend it and just constantly hang out with it and go diving with it. Him or her, I suppose. It's not an it. There's a fish over there. And yeah, if with any kind of luck, eventually the mermaid will take you to their secret island. It's actually called Mermaid Secret. And it's a pretty big hidden island, so you could build a nice house on it if you want. But that's one of the ones. Um, diving, I guess in a way, is associated with one. The very final dive area, which you need to be level 10 diving to even go down. Um, the cave there dumps out at a hidden island. Got scuba diving level 3. Oh, look at that! It's a seahorse! That's one of the, the rarest ones. It's a, a thousand one hundred or something, simoleons it sells for. So yeah, once again, we're already at the point where this is not really too homeless anymore. Since, of course, a lot of these high-level fish would otherwise be impossible in an unedited Isla Paradiso town. This eel, that's another 800. This little squadgy fella. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say. I understand. Jeez, that jingle. <laughs> Sorry. The Sims 4 Island Living is now out, and it's very much like this one. But you cannot dive underwater. It's just a rabbit hole experience in that game. Of course, it's a lot less buggy than this expansion pack, but I don't know. Better return to the surface because we got 40 real time seconds, and then. Well, actually, then he starts gasping for air, and then you have one minute in real time to get out or you drown. It's another way you can die. The ways that you can die in this expansion pack that were introduced are. Drowning? No, wait, that was always a thing. But drowning by scuba diving, I think, is a separate thing. Shark attack can kill you, but it's very rare to actually kill you. Usually you just get a negative moodlet. And a bad memory. Um, there was another one. Oh, dehydration as a mermaid. Mermaids have to keep their hydration, which is the hygiene. $13! Imagine if your bills in real life were only $13. Man, the things I would be doing. I suppose that's how rich people feel, right? Day-to-day -day life isn't such a challenge for them, so they have kind of free reign to do whatever. We will in due time, because another island requirement is to own a five-star resort, something I have yet to show, show off with this expansion. You can own resorts and manage them, and get them all the way from zero to one star up to five star, and that's also another lifetime wish. The one that I have here is Grand Explorer, which is to discover all the hidden islands. But one of the other ones that you could promise a sim when you create them or whatever is um, Resort Mogul, or however you say that word. And it's to get a level five resort, but this one is kind of the most complicated one Bronson Ziegler. Sure, let's chat with him. <laughs> Again, it's not really homeless because every sim has a cell phone. But he is too sad to garden, and we need to garden. So anything we could do to get that social up right now. And this will definitely do it. I think that should be enough right there. <laughs> Cromilo. Norlish. Truggleish Medish. Should make a sim called that. There's something they always say that I've always th thought would make a good fat woman sim name. I think it's Barbara Kronk. I think that's what they say. It sounds like Barbara Kronk to me. But I have yet ever in my life to make a sim called Barbara Kronk. Ah yes, we got some heavy rain. Might as well grill some kelp. Oh yeah, the lifeguard thing. Crap. 
Well, we have an issue here, though. We're not ready yet, primarily. Well, you're going to see the lifeguard career is kind of lackluster. Because it's The Sims 3 and it has such a hard time populating Sims anywhere. Um, very rarely are there people to actually save in the water. And that's the huge problem with discovering that particular island associated with the lifeguard career. But we will see what we can do. This is the beach that never has anybody. It's got that fish spawner. Nobody is frailing about in the water. But we will come anyway and hope for the best. Enjoy the weather, at least. Yeah, nobody's gonna come. Maybe it lasts until 6 p.m. Sims time. So every now and then, towards the tail end, a boat will show up and somebody will start drowning. But here we come. I do not expect anybody to come, though. There is a way to debug cheat this, and I will be resorting to that, I believe, because this is just way too slow, and there's no excuse for it, so I think cheats are very well permitted. Sailing away on the wind server. What the heck? Why did he stop at that random island? Well, we're going to deliver the fish, because we have them in our inventory. Nice. 210 simoleons. That's it? I have way more fish than that. I thought I told him to sell... Or no, I didn't. That was just for the opportunity. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, I still got all these fish. Well, hang on. Go back in there. If you go to... No, it's the grocery store. Sell all fish in inventory. Yeah, almost 2,000 simoleons. That's a nice start. We can start buying some things. We're saving it for more important stuff like the athletic class we still need to take. There's a park right here. We could get some more fish. We could nap on the bench. Or we could use our handy-dandy sleeping bag. Hunger is a little bit low, though. You know what? The diner's right here. We just made a ton of money. 18 bucks to eat a nice meal. Why not? Again, The Sims 3 makes it insanely easy to take care of your Sims. It really is a challenge to... Like I said, try to make them live in a way that's... <laughs> Unhealthy and bad, I guess? I don't know. Look at that perfectly defined square between the diner lot and the park lot. I remember when I first installed this game on this laptop that I'm playing on, it said, we do not recognize your graphics card. But it is an NVIDIA... Um... Crap, what the heck is it? I don't even know. I'm not good. I'm not a PC gamer. I'm sure you could tell. Like, there, I still don't even know the camera controls of this game that well. I know, like, when you go, you could press tab, and you could look at stuff without all this heads-up display crap. But, um, when you do that, I don't know how to move the camera in a way. I know WASD does a little bit of something, but it's identical to the arrow keys, and then you still have control of your mouse. And it's very hard to kind of move it and angle it in a way that is not jittery. But I'm stupid. And I think that's all that is. Getting warm, though. You see that moodlet there with the little temperature icon? He wants to own a resort. This is actually the free resort of this place. Hobart's Hideaway. For zero simoleons, you can own it and start upgrading it. It's completely run down. And it's very hard to make that location five stars. The terrain is very slopey too so you gotta like go all terrain nuts but we're gonna go to the athletic class because we want at least one point in athletic because as soon as you get that one point anything that you do that would potentially build your athlete skill 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 <laughs> it does but until you get that one point like swimming does nothing actually i think swimming does maybe i don't know but since we're in town we'll make use of the summer snack stand again but it's daylight, so we can't swipe anything. And there we go! When we turn into a mermaid later, we're gonna constantly be bu building that, because the mermaids swim everywhere. They refuse to take boats, and it's a huge pain in the neck. But, it is good for that purpose, building the athletic skill, which is part of the lifeguard promotion requirement. 
You need to constantly save people in the ocean when they're drowning, build your athletic skill, and build charisma. Doing any of that at any time will increase your job performance and lead to promotion as a lifeguard. And yeah, that's just helpful for money purposes. It's not necessary for the island. You don't need to reach level 10 of the lifeguard career. Whoa, I was like this too. Yeah, very loud, but it's nice. Why didn't that satisfy the wish? Oh, I guess I have to launch it from your inventory. Well, okay, we'll promise that one. That's buying food from the snack stand, which we need to do anyway. Kanji Halidopo. That's another sim name. Look at that. That's one happy sim right there. Aside from the social, I mean, we could talk to... Every now and then, there's a really hot sim. Man in the hot dog stand. Sometimes it's a mermaid. But just a, a regular townie that somehow became a mermaid, not one of the... It's very specific with it, and we'll see more on that as we meet a mermaid, which hopefully we can do. We need to tend this garden, too. I forgot. See, this is the thing. When you're wandering all about, you forget about your home lot. But it's fun. 25. We're getting up there. It's because of the bathroom, isn't it? Nice seagull noises, too. It's very nice. This is, an, this is an enjoyable, addicting game, and I cannot speak, apparently. That's all right, though. Fertilize with the best fertilizers. Um, that sounds good in theory, but I kind of don't want to throw away what I have, because we still need money. Because remember, we got to own a resort. I don't know, that might be a thing. I got 12 pieces of kelp, which is nice. I want to save that for when I do become a mermaid because one thing that does happen when you become a mermaid is you instantly max master the scuba diving skill. So wherever you're at, even if you're a level 1 scuba diver and you become a mermaid, you're at level 10 then, and you could go anywhere. And the last, like, three skill points of scuba diving take forever to get up there. So... Probably when we reach about level 7 in scuba diving, I'm going to look into turning into a mermaid. Once again, just to speed things up and keep the pacing of actually doing things every video. Like, keep it consistent. Because the last thing I want is to make another video where I'm just bumbling around, don't know what to talk about. Yes, yeah, an octopus! That's like 400 things. But yeah, the problem with this is the later episodes of this series. Look at all these fish. See, I love when this works. This is why I added all these spawners. What? Uh, there's no way I'm going to have very nice tomatoes, so no. Mad dog caught a sea polyp. What a sentence. A blowfish. You ever see the video of Amazon Fire TV, where it's, a uh, Gary Busey? There's the outtakes of that commercial where he's talking to a blowfish. I don't know, every time I see the word blowfish, I always think about that now, because he's like, Hello, blowfish. I don't know, this is Gary Busey craziness. We'll get some more kelp while we wait for fish to spawn, which, there we go. We got an angelfish going on. And there's another black goldfish. See, they're just popping in. There's so many spawners down here. I see a squadgy eel as well. Again, this pack is just so fun when it works. And I like that it's working right now. It's beautiful. But very soon, these spawners are all, even though there's like, I don't even know. This whole area has them. But they're all going to stop working soon enough. And now we can go to Davy Jones' locker. That's beautiful. That is where our first treasure chest is, which has a map piece in it. That's another island. We need to find four map pieces. Two of them are underwater in dive locations. Two of them are in bottles that wash up on the shore or underwater that have a 1% to 5% chance of being in a bottle. So you could find a message in a bottle, but it's not going to have a map piece. There's only a 1% to 5% chance, which is the biggest pain in the neck ever. I hate things that are up to such small chance like that. And that's where... Like, that's one of the things I'm hinting at, where later on, when that's all that's left, it's going to become... 
pretty arduous and probably have a lot of cuts. Like maybe even just cut all of the collecting out until I find whatever it is I'm looking for. But we're not there yet, and we could get very lucky and find it right away. In addition to that, there is a bottle, a very rare bottle, that unlocks an island instantly. It's Plum Bob Island, and if you know anything about The Sims, the thing that hovers over their head all the time is called a Plum Bob. And that island has a treasure chest with so much money in it, and a very rare Plum Bob painting. So those are probably the two most annoying ones. That and the lifeguard is probably the next most annoying. Everything else is doable at a pretty decent pace. But those 1-5% to chance things, they suck. And I believe I may have actually explained how to get all eight islands at this point. I talked about the diving cave, Plumbob Island, the 1% chance of that, the map fragments, that's three islands right there. The mermaid one, that's four. The five-star resort, that's five. Saving 35 sims as a lifeguard, that's six. There's one more. What am I forgetting? Oh, the adventure. Wait, we got to set that up too. We have to check in at a resort. That's what we got to do. We gotta check in at a resort and ask for diving adventures, and it triggers a six event opportunity thing, chain. There's six opportunities chain, chained together that you have to complete, and then you unlock Refuge Island, which is one of my favorite ones. We might actually end up moving there eventually. Also, look at his outfit. I just like how he's got this crazy scuba swim gear. For just his casual bathing suit, this is what he wears. Even if he goes in a hot tub, he's got the tank and everything. <laughs> I don't know. This game's fun. Sometimes. 30 vehicles have been removed. Oh, yes. I have mods. Enros, Master Controller, Debug Enabler, or Master Controller Cheats, I think it's called, and Overwatch. You absolutely need them if you want to play Island Paradise the EA way. Or just in general. Even if you have a customly built... Island Paradise, you need mods, because EA did not bug test this pack at all. If they did, they did a really terrible job with it. See? Unroutable Sim found. Reginald Dahl. He was probably lost, unable to get into a front door, because so many houses have an improperly set front door and stuff. Um, so in addition to the additional fish spawners that I added in Rocky Reef, I also bulldozed the crap out of so many houses. I, all the... Boats are gone, for the most part. I think I kept one. But yeah, it's a pretty vacant town. I bulldozed a lot of the problem houses just to be done with it. Because we're not really associating with the townies too much. I do like some of the Island Paradise ones, though. I kept some of them. I, there's a couple that drowns instantly, and I actually did keep them in their houseboat. But surprisingly, I haven't seen it slowed down. Like, it's almost a given after, like, within the first 15 minutes of playing, the game will freeze for, like, several little second chunks. And usually when that's happening, it's because the Dreg family is drowning. And they become playable ghosts. Which is kind of neat. Hey, it's a message in a bottle! I don't remember if this is rare. It's not rare. There's only one rare spawner. But I don't know if it's common or uncommon. That's the thing. There's common, uncommon, and rare. Those are the three categories of seashell spawners. Say that three times fast. Get that first. But yeah, another reason I'm holding off on becoming a mermaid, in addition to the fact that we haven't even met one yet and don't have the lifetime happiness to buy it. Nope, it's just a rare message in a bottle. It always says it's rare, even if it's common. And it's just a stupid message. Sell it. Every time we pick one of those up, we want to hope that it either reveals Plum Bob Island or gives us a map piece. But again, that's a 1% to 5% chance. Let's eat this Kona bead since the energy is too low. I don't know. I've never really snacked on these things before. But yeah, nobody's drowning again. I hate the lifeguard profession. It's cool when it works, but it very rarely does. 
Yeah. Kona lift. Look at that. Plus 30 mood. I don't know that it actually affects energy or not, though. I gotta look that up. But this chair, you should be able to debug it to increase how many people you saved. But I'm not gonna do that just yet. But it is an option, so know that it's there. And I definitely will be doing it because there's no way. We're gonna be here for like nine years before we save 35 people. Because there's nobody! Sims 3, man. Look at that house. Cool mohawk and tattoos. Let's check in at Sparkling Sands. I'm eating at the diner at the moment because it was just close to the beach that we were surveying. And yeah, we're getting way up there on time though. This is like an, gotta be an hour long, I guess expect hour long episodes for this until we start completing our objectives because it's kind of like Breath of the Wild in that case where if you make it any less than an hour, not much happens. Not much gets done. And I'm not okay with that. But this, we gotta trigger this event chain that I'm talking about because our whole purpose is to discover the islands. That's why I'm playing this. So 127 to check in. We've got it. Ask about adventure. There we go. Oh, she's heartbroken. Her husband must have died or cheated on her. There is story progression in this game. Talk about Refuge Island with Christopher Collins. Okay. I believe the person's always random. But we could do that. Actually, wait, hang on. We're almost dead. As in tired. So, since we checked in, let's turn in for the night. You could freshen up as well. It doesn't do much for energy, but... Actually, that's probably a good ending point. So next time, we will trigger this six opportunity chain to get Refuge Island, and that'll be our second discovered island. So thanks for watching, you guys. Hopefully you enjoy this, and I'll see you next time. Take care.